Okay, so our next lecture will be uh, congenital and stationary retinal diseases. This is from chapter 12. This is a little bit of a short chapter, which is why I kind of combined. I thought they were kind of related to, the, uh, to chapter three. So this um, will talk about color vision abnormalities and uh, night vision abnormalities. So the cone, cone system, of course, um, is uh, responsible for color vision and then the uh, rod system for uh, night vision. So with color vision abnormalities, um, you can have uh, congenital versus progressive. So uh, congenital vision, color vision abnormalities tend to be bilateral. They tend to be along the uh, red-green color axis. Um, and they tend to be stationary. Um, so they, they, throughout life, they do not progress or wor worsen. Males are predominantly uh, affected by congenital color vi vision abnormalities compared to females. Um, it's a lot more are X-linked. And then progressive, it can be either male or females. Um, they tend to be unilateral, they can be bilateral, and they tend to be along the uh, blue, yellow-blue axis. So with co congenital color vision uh, deficiencies, you have anomalous trichromatism, dichromacy, and achromatopsia. So normal um, color vision, you use three primary colors combined to detect um, different hues of colors. So with anomalous trichromatism, they have an abnormal uh, absorption spectrum in one of their uh, photopigments. And so they use uh, different proportions of the primary colors to determine color hues. Um, this tends to, this is the most common um, color vision abnormality. It tends to affect five to 6% of males. Um, you can detect the abnormality on, very, uh, on subtle color plates um, and the Farnsworth uh, panel 100. Um, they'll usually pass the, the uh, Farnswell panel D15 test um, because their changes, their color vision deficiencies tend to be uh, much more subtle. These patients function very well, um, probably have little, little functional defect. So dichromacy um, occurs in 2% of males and they're actually missing one of the cone photopigments. So uh, red cones, uh, absence of red cones is the most common uh, deficiency um, and it's X-linked. And then missing uh, cone, green cones is uh, also the next uh, common. These, these patients will typically have similar uh, uh, deficiencies. Um, these patients would with the missing red cones, they'll be able to detect green in isolation in isolation, but with the red cones, they're not able to, without the red cones, they're not able to see red color in isolation, but combined together, they have difficulty with both green and red. And it's very similar with the, um, with the patients missing the green cones. Um, they're, a, they're not able to see green in isolation, um, but they're able to see red, but combined, they have difficulty seeing both. So it's, it's you know, very similar, it's just red, green color blindness. So it's hard to detect, um, you know, to delineate these two patients. Um, patients without blue cones is much more rare, tends to be autosomal dominant. Um, and um, they're able to, they're not able to see uh, blue or yellow very well. So uh, achromatopsia, there's two types. There's rod mono monochromatism, and then there's S-cone or blue-cone monochromatism. So rod monochromatism, you only have normal rod functions, and it's the most severe type. Um, so they have no functioning uh, cones, so they only see shades of gray. And they have absence of cone responses on ERG and uh, abnormal cone responses on dark adaptometry. Um, they tend to be autosomal recessive. Um, S-cone monochromatism, so they have functioning rod and S-cone function. So they're able to see um, uh, uh, blue colors, but they're very, clinically, it's very difficult to detect the difference between rod monochromatism 
chromatoma, rod monochromatism and S cone. Um, these tend to be X linked. Um, the one thing that these patients may have uh, slightly better vision than your uh, rod monochromatism. Um, and they also will have a severely a reduced cone flicker ERG because they're missing the L and the M cones. So with night vision abnormalities, which are attributed to the rod system, they're broken down into normal fundus and abnormal fundus. So um, with normal fundus, you have a congenital stationary night blindness. And abnormal fundus, you'll have um, the categories of fundus, albipunctatus, and Aguchi disease. So um, with congenital stationary night blindness, um, there's hundreds of mutations attributed to this condition. Um, it's broken down into different types. Um, there's a Riggs type and a Schubert-Bornstein type. And from my understanding that this type is then broken down into complete and incomplete. I think your book just goes into the complete and incomplete forms, which are X-linked. And the complete form is localized. So basically you're having um, a disruption of the response between the photoreceptor and the bipolar cells. So um, the complete form is localized to the on bipolar cell pathway. And then the incomplete is localized to the on and off bipolar uh, cell pathway. So with this, you have more of a rod um, defect. And then with the incomplete, you have almost a combination of the rod and cone uh, defect. So with congenital stationary night blindness, um, most commonly X-linked, but you can also have autosomal res uh, recessive and autosomal dominant. Um, patients tend to be uh, myopic. So the classic um, three findings you'll see is decreased night vision, decreased vision, which they think is attributed more to myopia, and uh, patients may also have nystagmus. Their uh, fundus will look normal. Um, they may have a paradoxical pupillary response where um, with lower light levels, they'll have pupillary constriction instead of dilation and um, they'll have no uh, rod response on dark adaptometry, and they'll have a uh, negative ERG, which I'll show you. And this actually, this negative ERG is also a question you may get on your boards. So um, this is broken down into the complete congenital stationary night blindness and incomplete. And um, so with the, so this is the, uh, the dark adapted low intensity light, and you can see that um, for the complete, which is more of a rod uh, involved condition, we'll have a complete flat, uh, dark adapted uh, ERG. This is the uh, dark adapted with a um, higher light intensity. So you'll see the A wave. So the photoreceptor function is normal, but there's a disruption in the um, synapse between the the photoreceptors to the bipolar cells. So you get this negative ERG because the, the B wave is now gone. So there's a problem going from the outer retina to the inner retina. And that's a very uh, classic uh, question you'll get. And you'll also see this also in the incomplete congenital stationary night blindness. You'll have this negative ERG where the B wave is absent, but you have a pretty good A wave. Um, this is the... Um, the light flicker ERG. And you can see that with complete, because they have more cone function, um, the light flicker ERG will be normal where you have more of a depressed finding in the incomplete. And then this is the uh, light adapted ERG, which um, is more of a cone response. So you can see, you'll see it have some cone response. And then with the incomplete, with more cone involvement, you have more of a flattening of the uh, light adapted ERG. And the thing with ERG, if you kind of know what you're looking at, um, if you, you, you have to know if you're in a dark adapted or light adapted state. Um, and you, if you know the A wave is more outer retina, B wave is more inner retina, you can almost predict what the ERG is gonna um, show when you have different types of uh, pathologic conditions. So if you just know the basics, it's kind of easy to uh, predict what your ERGs are going to look like. 
So going into uh, ab abnormal looking uh, fundus, uh, fun fundus albipunctatus, it's a mutation in the RDH5, which encodes 11 cis retinol dehydrogenase. So the difficulty is they're unable to recycle um, their 11 cis retinol back to 11 cis retinol. Um, and so you have a delayed regeneration of rhodopsin. And so you have just a increase in this 11 cis retinol. And so they're, because they're unable to cycle back to their uh, normal state, they'll have a delayed uh, dark adaption. They'll have night vision issues, but with prolonged dark adaption, when the, when the retina has time to kind of get back to its normal state, they'll start to see um, some, some lights at night. Um, the vision and color vision tends to be uh, good. The ERG, as you would expect, will show an undetectable rod response. Um, you'll have some decrease in the dark adapted ERG. And again, it will normalize with a prolonged dark adaption as you can get, um, as the rhodopsin regenerates after um, being in the dark. So this is a picture I got from Retinal Gallery. I think this might be one of Steve's patients. Um, so this is a uh, picture of fundus albipunctatus. You'll see all these little white dots. Um, you'll notice that the, the retinal vessels look pretty normal. Macula looks good. Um, and uh, optic nerve is nice and pink. Um, so this is in contrast to retinitis punctatal vessens which looks similar with the white dots, but that tends to be more of a progressive um, retinal issue. The vessels tend to be more attenuated in that condition. Um, later on, they may get patches of atrophy. It looks more like uh, retinitis pigmentosa. That's, um, and that uh, disease is attributed to a different mutation. Um, so this is more of a non-progressive uh, type of problem, and these little white dots are thought to be uh, actual buildup of the 11 cis retinol. And last, uh, Oguchi's disease, um, which is pretty rare. Um, there's an increased incidence in the Japanese. It's autosomal recessive. Um, so it's mutations in this uh, SAG, which encodes arrestin or GRK1, which encodes rhodopsin kinase. So these um, uh, proteins arrest or stop the phototransduction cascade. And so you kind of have an unregulated uh, phototransduction cascade with this problem. So because um, rhodopsin is not uh, deactivated, um, you have a prolonged response, uh, rhodopsin, prolonged rhodopsin regeneration um, and prolonged dark adaption. And the finding you'll see with this is this Mizuo Nakamura phenomenon where it's um, caused by an overstimulation of the rods because you don't have the, the um, regulation of the phototransduction cas cascade. So you have an overstimulation of rods and excessive extracellular potassium. And so what you see with this is with a bright light flash, you'll have this like gray metallic yellow sheen to the retina. And then with prolonged um, uh, dark adaption, the fundus will return more to normal. So that will be it. Does anybody have any questions?